Welcome. I'm Pastor Zeman. And I'm Vicar Doldy. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the, the Pastor, Pastor Vicar Podcast. It's the Pastor Vicar Podcast. Hey, he's got it. Right. Well, all you know, right. I had all week, the last week to practice. You yes, know. on the lake. Yeah, yeah. Not well, on the lake. For a little while on yeah. the lake, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, um, why don't we get started with prayer, as is custom. Good Would idea. You mind? Sure. Okay. Let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, as we get ready for Reformation, we thank and praise you for the gospel that you've given us and uh, that the gospel is going out throughout the whole world. We ask that you would continue to do that in our church and, and not only our church, but throughout the whole, the whole world. Just bless that gospel and continue to uh, help it to change lives as it, as it can do so powerfully. Uh, bless this also this podcast, and may your word be clearly heard, that gospel, that saving gospel. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, and then you're picking the book today, too. I am, and I'm trying to find a, a, a good uh, Reformation book. Oh, yeah. Uh, among these here. And yes. this is a, a, a room full of books. Um, let's see here. I think uh, I thought I saw one before. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> I lost it. Where did it, it go? Probably should have that. Oh, here it is. Oh, I found it. Oh, nice. Luther, a biography of a reformer. And uh, this this photo here is actually from the movie. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. The the one the bo movie that I think is the best done with Luther. Yeah. But uh, Martin Luther had one goal: peace with God. Hmm. He didn't find it in the holy relics and indulgences or of the church or life as an obedient monk. Luther discovered God's treasure of truth buried under human laws and regulations. He discovered the gospel in the word of God. He took his stand on that word, defying the highest authorities in the church and state. In doing so, he started the oldest continuing evangelical movement in history. This is Luther's dramatic story. Wow. So I'm wondering if this book uh, kind of follows the movie. Maybe that's what they do here, or if oh, it's it just a, I don't know. They're showing Maybe a lot of movie, came out at the same a lot time. of movie clips here. Oh sure. This is when Luther's out there preaching among. That's definitely not accurate. I was told. Uh, oh. uh they usually used the pulpit. Oh. Back then. And he didn't preach like wandering around the church. Sure. But, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of things that are not exactly right. And Probably just wanted to make him look like the people's A little guy. more contemporary, yeah. the people's right. pastor, yeah, 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 walking around. Right. Yeah, these are all clips from the movie. Uh, if you haven't gotten that movie once, check it out. Uh, you can. The cover looks like that. Uh, Luther, the movie, and uh, it's pretty well done. Yeah. Very good. So that is the book. It is in our library here, yeah. and I believe probably other Luther books. That's yeah. If you look. I found out from a viewer of our podcast mm -hmm. the official name of the thing we always just slam the book oh. but yeah yeah go for it all right and then i'll explain it okay ready yep one two three Woo. thank you yes i found out the real deal you know that like black and white thing that they get uh -huh. the yeah it is called a um clapboard clapboard i was gonna say clapboard. the clapper mm -hmm. yeah clapboard Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So um, the thing that we'll be talking about today, as you've kind of gotten us started with a, a thematically appropriate book, mm -hmm. is uh, the this coming this Sunday's reading for Reformation. Um, that is it is correct. yeah, and we'll be focusing on the uh, reading from Revelation. Ah, yeah. Revelation. So, uh -huh. Yeah, good. Uh, people are always attracted to Revelation, uh, or at least curious about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, hopefully, we can dig into I that. I think this will be two weekends in a row that we'll be looking at Revelation. Oh yeah, yeah. Because All Saints Day. All Saints Day is the yep. next weekend, and I uh, mm -hmm. believe that text is Re Revelation as well. Wonderful. So, yeah. Can't wait for that one. That one. I, I All Saints Day is uh, a good. Good thing to celebrate. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt about it. Yeah. And so is the Reformation. And you, sir, Will got the preaching. honor to yes. preach. Woo. Yeah. So that, I'm excited about it. Um, also nervous. I think 
this one, this one I uh, definitely will be needing a lot of help on. So that'll be um, evident as we go through this. I don't have, I have a little bit of an idea, but um, mm -hmm. not as fleshed out as, as some of the, the ones have been in the past. And, and that's just how this process will go sometimes. Mm -hmm. if and Maybe our viewers don't know this, but uh, every Reformation, the same texts are used every single year. There's one from the Revelation, and uh, um, I'm going blank on the other ones here. Uh, Romans, of course, Romans, and then oh, yeah. a Matthew passage. Uh, these are used every single year, so hmm. you're going to get familiar with these texts, and uh, chances are you'll be, well, you know, if you do every th every year a different one, that's three years, and you'll be repeating again. Right. So uh, you'll end up, and that's always a that's always a big struggle for the preacher to come up with something new mm -hmm. and. You know, you go back to Re Revelation, Romans, and Matthew, and you got to go back to it again. So, yeah, you'll get a bunch of them. In fact, yeah. I looked in my files and I found two sermons on the Revelation text. So yeah. I am ready to go. Yes. But, and the other, th the other big thing is that you're dealing with is the Reformation. And everybody right. kind of knows what it's about, or do they? Or do they? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think you might be surprised. In fact, when I've talked to my confirmation class, or talk to you know little kids. Mm -hmm. I ask them, you know, who, who's Martin Luther, and what do you think they're thinking? Uh, oh, Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King, King Junior. Of course, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. No, yeah. they they get that all confused. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Of course, that makes sense. Right. So there's a lot of elements here in the Reformation that are uh, really good to talk about, and not to assume people know about the Reformation, what that was all about. Yeah. I think today's text is going to get at uh, a really good aspect of it, the key, I think, and that's the gospel. But we'll, we'll get that. We'll see where we go. On yeah. That. But yeah, I think in this session here, it's going to be more feeling it out. Here, yeah. Trying to figure out how can we bring this, how can we bring this to the people? Right. That's fresh and timely and uh, uh, applicable t to today. Yeah. So I, I think our world is in need of a reformation. Yeah. I, I, I can, uh, Sympathize with that. So let yeah. it begin with your sermon. <laughs> okay. How that's about a that? tall order. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into that, yeah. um, question time, as, okay. as is custom as well. We've, mm -hmm. we've got a couple customs here <laughs> on the podcast now that people are uh, look forward to. So first thing, I mean, it's question time, but we have to answer a question from yeah, last Yeah, I want to know because I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I did listen to this, uh, and you were throwing that out, and yeah. I, I wish I would have known. I could have surprised you. And That would have been that would been pretty cool. Yeah. No one guessed it. Um, at the people I talked to, someone gave me a, a pretty funny fake answer, um, but I can't remember it. <laughs> I just laughed. I thought it was pretty funny. But okay. So the question had to do with my microphone. Yeah, uh, what kind of a here. microphone is that? Um, and it's specifically just this guy right here. It's this is just uh, um, what's that called? The catch the spit. And something? Yeah, spit, <laughs> spit guard. No, <laughs> it's um, a pop filter. That's what it is. So that so that when you uh, say your p's and b's and t's, mm -hmm. all those hard consonants, you don't like spike the sound up really nice, high. Nice. So that's what that does. But the microphone itself is called a condenser microphone. Mm, that's the name of it. Condenser microphone. And it's it's called that. Um, because you actually have to run power into it. Um, there's this little like metal plate in there that um, once you uh, power it, um, it's a lot more sensitive and it picks up um, uh, really delicate sounds and even whispers and, and all that um, as well. Now, I mentioned the Polaroid pattern. If anyone could have guessed that, that was kind of the bonus thing. So the I think I have thing. to explain that uh, as well. Okay. Um, so microphones pick up sound in 3D shapes. Mm -hmm. This microphone picks up in like a cone shape. So it'll it'll kind of start here and then go out from here and pick up anything that passes through that cone in terms of sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is called a cardioid polar pattern. Oh my! Yes, and you, I'm sure that's kind of a you you would probably be able to guess the root of that word wouldn't you sounds like heart yeah exactly and yeah. that's that's what it is so the 3d shape that this microphone picks up is actually a heart shape believe it or not nice. around the microphone so you're kind of at the i'm just going to pretend I'll, I'll do it in front of me so i don't have to go over there but yeah. um here's like the bottom of the heart is where he's at 
and then it actually goes around to the other side um, oh. and it goes all the way around the microphone in like heart shape <laughs> nice. and so some people when they're using a microphone like that um, they'll sing duets into it that's a good microphone for singing duets because if you flip the microphone around you can have one person on one side of it and the other person on the other side and it'll pick it up really well like maybe your brother yeah my twin you brother <laughs> You guys could do it to a hat. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be tricky. That'd be some fancy footwork in editing, but <laughs> we'll give it a, we'll give it a go sometime. No, hopefully not. Yeah. Okay. Question then for mm -hmm. today is okay. for you. What is your favorite thing to create? Wow. Favorite thing to create. Uh, I would have to go, like, right offhand, I would like to say writing world. I, I've written a children's book and to create that world and all about it. Mm. It's kind of fun to create a whole other world and characters in that mm. world. That's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And any anytime I'm writing, even a sermon, you know, mm -hmm. you're creating uh, something and hopefully it's going to do its work. And right. Yeah, so uh, the writing aspect of it. And and an, another way, too, is that totally unrelated would be outside. Love to create garden space and mm. beauty spaces. And because th that is actually one thing in life uh, that actually can get finished. Mm. You know, pastor's yeah. life is never finished. Right. You ever notice that? Yeah. I've, you get one sermon, boom, you got to do another one. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Every, every week. It mm. never seems like you get finished. But an outside right. project, you can start it and finish it. Yeah. Shoo. Yeah. Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why you like cutting wood. Yeah, I do. That's because it's a finished product. Exactly. You can actually yeah. say you're done. I think a lot of pastors have something like that. Yeah. Not everyone, but I think a, a lot of people have something because of the nature of the work is is Cut. very much like it's never done. You know, you're you're charged with caring for souls. Yeah. Um, and that's an ongoing task. Cause what, what's that? Pro what's that for you? Do you have one of those things that you? Yeah. Well, the you mentioned it. It's like I like chopping down trees and splitting wood mm -hmm. um, that's that's one thing um uh songs i like writing songs um mm -hmm. that's another thing that's like yeah very similar to the writing idea yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's probably the thing that i could i could definitely say i like to create the most mm -hmm. i like random art projects though too like mm -hmm. i've done origami before it's kind of random wow, but there you go. yeah woodwork as well um mm -hmm. so yeah that's my answer Good answer. <laughs> yeah, so it's good to have those things. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. Well, let's uh, dig into our text then. Why don't we? I, sh I think we shall. All right. As we mentioned before, this text is Revelation 14, verses 6 to 7, and I'll read it for you. Okay. That that also is a challenge. What? That's two verses. Two verses. Yeah. <laughs> two verses. I know. I thought I, I was going to start my sermon listing all the challenges that I went through. Yeah. But I might do that here. I might for for people's benefit. Just share yeah, I think that's share the thoughts cool. that I've had so far leading up to where I am right now. And one of those challenges is two verses. Yes. I mean it's yeah. very narrowing and uh boy, to talk for fifteen minutes on two verses. Yeah. Whew. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we like this. It's good education for the vicar. That's don't right. You think? A vicar learning moment. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. All right, let's hear this first. Okay, so first. again, this is Revelation 14, verses 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Nice. Yeah. Kind of a little connection <clears throat> right at the end there with the question. I, I didn't even plan this, but mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the creator uh, of heaven and earth. And that's kind of what we were talking about. about things to create. Things. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, I'll go through the uh the ideas that I, I had so far. So my first thought was, wow, yeah, how do you how do you work with just two verses? Mm -hmm. And especially in Revelation. Two mm -hmm. verses in Matthew might be a different story. But two verses in Revelation is 
um, a unique challenge because it's small and uh, if people don't know any sort of context, I, I can imagine that being, it, they need some in order mm -hmm. to, to understand mm -hmm. what's going on here. Yeah. So then I thought about broadening the context. And so I, I actually read Revelation 1 through 14 all right, there. <laughs> to read all the way up to it to yeah. see if I could find elements that were similar or uh, how this might um, mm -hmm. fit into mm -hmm. it. And I just for myself, I couldn't figure out a good starting point. Um, I, I read through one of your sermons and I, I thought you did a that that seemed like it worked really well. I'll have you talk about, more about that in a little bit. But for me, I, I was like, I don't know if that's the route I want to go with. I, mm -hmm. I feel like the more um, context you bring in, the more questions you actually have to answer because right. of the nature of revelation. Right. Um, so then I thought, oh, well, these questions. OK, maybe what I can do is just kind of go through the text and pick. Um, the questions that I think people might have as mm -hmm. they're going through the text and just try to answer those and, and proclaim um, both law and gospel in, in doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought that, that might be a shot, but uh, that task almost was overwhelming too because <laughs> there's a lot of questions um, that come just from these two, two verses. verses. Yeah, it's loaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the thing that I kind of, sort of settled on was um, picking four things in this text um, that I think uh, will help set the scene um, and actually pick a different question to answer rather than trying to ask um, what is this saying um, ask a question and I have a cute little story for it so we'll see if we'll see if this is what actually happens on Sunday but mm -hmm. uh, in Saturday um, but Asking the question, uh, what's the deal with fill in the blank? Um, it's uh, it's kind of the, that's kind of how a lot of uh, comedy sketches start. Like, what's the deal with airplane food? <laughs> Isn't it gross? You know? <laughs> okay. And then, but just asking that in, in light of this, this text, like asking, what's the deal with this angel that's flying directly overhead? Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. what's the deal with this eternal gospel? Yeah. And then what's the deal with this eternal gospel that seems to look more like law when it's actually being proclaimed? Hmm. Okay. And then um, finally to ask, like, what's the deal with talking about uh, God being the creator at the very end of it? Those are some interesting questions. Yeah. Hmm. What's the deal? What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, well, I, um, when I read this, first thing I was like, okay, I saw another angel flying. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. With, where's Were the there person? others? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tell me about that. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, always yeah. a challenge too is uh, how much detail do you go into right. context? Mm -hmm. uh, you could do a whole sermon on the context, then it becomes a Bible study. Exactly. And that's yeah. we've we've talked about the difference right. between teaching and preaching. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, the the teaching part there and getting into all that that belongs in the Bible study. To preach is a different matter. Right. There can be teaching in your preaching, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Yeah. The challenge will and be. And almost in this case, you you, you kind of have to teach in order to preach this. this yeah, text. but you have to watch. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to get you, you know if you find out your sermons three fourths teaching and very right. little preaching, mm -hmm. then you know you, you might as well just have a Bible study. Sure. Uh, it depends mm -hmm. on your purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No doubt. So, yeah, that's one thing I saw right away, that another angel, okay, you, you kind of want to know about that. Right. Uh, and that might be some context you can bring in. Mm -hmm. And then this idea of eternal gospel, wh what's that all about? Well, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. Eternal gospel? Hmm. Yeah. To, and, uh, th and then, of course, uh, you, you, you hit a couple other things. And here's the other thing that you have to keep dealing with is you have to consider the day. The day is Reformation. Yeah, and I think that's the eternal gospel is kind of the hinge point for that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my thought was um, to ask the question, what's the deal with this eternal gospel? Yeah, yeah. And then to say, like, what's the deal with the Reformation? It kind of seemed like for a moment there, the gospel wasn't being, like, proclaimed. It's mm -hmm. it. Let, mm -hmm. That's the way we often... Um, 
picture that time in our minds that yeah no um, that's very fair yeah, yeah? and and uh it so wasn't like, it wasn't being proclaimed it was it was hidden yeah and uh so just to set everyone else up for what we're talking about so martin luther's day um he was up against um a corrupt church that mm-hmm. Um, was selling forgiveness, as you put in in your sermon that I read earlier. Yeah. Um, which is not how forgiveness works, and no. that's that's the 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 wonderful news of the gospel is that it doesn't work like that. There's no right. no thing that you have to do um, or give to God in order to receive the gift of forgiveness because it was paid for in full by it was done Jesus' death on the done. cross and mm-hmm. then His resurrection. Yeah. For sure. And, and again, now you're bringing up another challenge. Mm-hmm. You could just talk about the Reformation. Right, yeah. And but then skip the text. Then entirely. you're not preaching but no, the text. No, it's And, no, and it's that's, that's another, another difficult thing is to, when people leave the church, they should know, okay, pastor preached or vicar preached on this text, mm-hmm. and it should now have some meaning to them. So when they read it, uh, you know, jumping out at me continues to be that eternal gospel. Oh, yeah. to, to try to figure out what that really means. Uh, right. Uh, you know, again, looking for those threads. Now, I, obviously, a thread would be Reformation, mm-hmm. um, definitely. But you don't want this just to be a Reformation sermon. Right. You want it to be a, re- refer- a Revelation Reformation right. sermon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what it is this year. Uh, you know, next year, uh, the, three years from now, we'll be in the, in the epistles. So we'll be back to Romans and... Mm-hmm. That's probably the easiest Reformation text right there, Romans one. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at that, and I, I kind of thought so, too. Yeah. There were a couple of questions that came up from that, but we, not not our focus. We'll c- no, get no back we, we keep back on this, <laughs> yeah. re- this Revelation text. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So th- those are some definite challenges, no doubt about it. Yeah. So where are you on that now? Where- well, I think the, th- the thread that I'm playing with is that that question what's the deal what's with? the deal yeah because well, because i think that in, it, it's less intimidating to than trying to specifically answer the questions that people might come up with mm-hmm. i think asking your own question can invite people into your own wonderings about it and right and it keeps you focused it so it, it narrows you down and and so i think that that question uh what's the deal can ultimately be answered Mm-hmm. by the gospel of this text nice. here's the deal <laughs> okay now you say what's the deal first that's kind of a slang term right mm-hmm. so well, translate that for some of our viewers that are might not sure might not understand what's the deal what's what is that yeah. well it's 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 another way of saying what what's going on here um or or it's a comment on uh if you're making a joke it's a comment on uh something unusual or strange um Airplane food is a, a go-to. Something that's not explainable, seem, right. seemingly unexplainable. Right, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and I, Revelation certainly has that character to it. It's like, how could this be explained? There's another angel? You know, the, the, right. all those questions. I, yeah. I could think, I could, you could say, what's the deal with Revelation? <laughs> you could, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's for sure. And yeah. it's interesting that that's the most requested book for Bible studies, yeah. by the way, because mm-hmm. everybody wants to know what's the deal with that. We, uh, youth group, started out, the first thing that the youth group wants to talk about is Revelation. Revelation. <laughs> I thought I heard that last yep. night. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yep. Yeah, I think I've probably done three or four Bible studies in Revelation. Wow. And one of the first ones done here when I came here was Revelation. There you go. <laughs> I, I, I think we did it twice, in fact. Wow. Yeah, since I've been here. That's this is the sixth year, so pretty oh, crazy. Yeah, that's that's pretty frequent for yeah for and one topic. I think people need to understand that usually Revelations people go to that because they see it as some futuristic book with yeah, all these yeah. futuristic things. Mm-hmm. And uh, here we have a, a text that's maybe not so super um, uh, talking about that, you know. Right, more like yeah. something that was in the past and it's kind of ongoing. Yeah. And a lot of the things in Revelation actually took place already. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. And that's key to understanding. And, and did you hear that? I don't know if you read that this this text has actually been linked to Luther. Yes. They say you have that probably yes. somewhere. Yes. Um, and if you look at I printed off a Bible okay. study for you. Um, All right. It's Wonderful. under your script there. Wonderful. We do have a script, but it's very short. And obviously mm-hmm. we don't follow it too. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second question uh, or the second note that I put on there. Um, and 
I think Pastor Riley is going to attach this to uh, emails from now on. Yes. It, yes, has, he's been doing that. Yeah, it seems like that works pretty good for— Then our listeners can— Yeah, follow along. Follow along. And also, you don't have to say it five times about verse. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Um, so if if you have the um, printout of, of this Bible study, I don't— We'll see if this is what I actually use on Saturday and Sunday. But mm-hmm. um, just—I'll definitely have this part in there. Um, the note is, um, during, but especially after Luther's life, people associated the angel here in Revelation mm-hmm. 14, verse 6, with the person of Martin Luther. Interesting. And in one instance, a man named Michael Stifel wrote a poem, and this was while Luther was still alive, connecting this passage with Luther, saying, John wrote for us of an angel who would set forth God's word with complete clarity. So Michael Stiefel obviously was German. And I, w- I would think it would be Stiefel then. Or Stiefel. You always Sorry. pronounce the second letter. Okay. I know that because Zeman, Z-I-E, oh. pronounce the second letter. Oh, there you the go. I-E, so it would be Stiefel. Okay, so Michael Stiefel. Yep. Yeah, German guy. And so he wrote that. I mean, I just read it in English, but it was mm-hmm. originally in German. Mm-hmm. And the last word, clarity, um, actually is lauter, or uh, it's a it's plain words sounding like Luther. Luther. Wow. So hmm. <laughs> fun little thing there. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Not sure if that's accurate or not. Right. But. And that's I kind of I th- I th- will uh, throw that out there to people to see you know mm-hmm. do you do you kind of agree or or disagree with this mm-hmm. text mm-hmm. maybe referring to the work of Luther yeah um, and I, I really think you could make the case either way you you could there there's a little danger in this though and and this is where people go wrong with Revelation they take all those things and make them coming true today. That all these things mean things of today. Yeah. So my question is, if that's the case, what kind of meaning did it have for the people at the time when when it was first written? If right. it's all fulfilled today, and uh, the meaning is only today, then you've lost that entire uh, group of Christians when this came out. Right. Because that book was meant for comfort. Yes. So. Um, I mean, you can make that case and say Luther was like one of those angels, but was he the angel? Uh, well, people aren't angels, right? Mm-hmm. But I understand. I understand the idea around it, right? But I, just stop thinking that Revelation is is somehow only applicable to today and to today's world, right? Because if that's the case, it just didn't have any meaning for people way back then. Yeah, and it did. And in fact, that's why God gave this book. This mm-hmm. vision to encourage those who were persecuted. Yeah, yeah, and it and it, it in this in a way, what you're saying is it's it's not just true for, um, it it, it didn't just have weight for people, um, back when it was written, but it it has and will, until he, Jesus returns again. That's because it's an eternal gospel. gospel. Yes, that's right. Eternal. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So for sure. But but I just don't like it when they when people just yeah. eliminate that whole entire time be, when after Jesus you know they're in that early Christ, early Christians. I mean if they're thinking oh oh it's the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union when it was the Cold War you know oh that's that that's the Middle East war for that's nuclear war or, you know oh, like all these th- picking things out of wild things yeah. mm-hmm. and that's why people are so fascinated with Revelation because they're trying to find meaning today. Yes. And then they try to plug in these things. Right. When revelation is not meant for that at all. No. In fact, right. most of revelation can be explained by the rest of the Bible. Right. So if you want to mm-hmm. study revelation, you really need to know your Bible. Yes. Which and is, specifically Old Testament. Yes. So, that's yeah. the crazy thing about yeah. it. Old Testament. <laughs> yeah, it, lots it, of revelation's a New Testament book, but mm-hmm. it is so Old Testament. No doubt. <laughs> Which makes total sense because yeah. The people who would be getting this yes. message would would, would have know. known yeah. the Old Testament, yeah. right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. the New Testament was being written while this is coming out, right? So, right. I, I think that's pro- yeah. might be a new thought to some people. Well, I'm glad you shared it then. I think sure. that'll be. Yeah, I, I hope that's beneficial for. for yeah, no, there's no doubt. There's futuristic things. It's like God's yeah. given a picture of 
the end, we know mm-hmm. how to end the story ends. It's yes. wonderful, very, very comforting. Yes, very much. When we so. see heaven coming down, we see the saints yeah. there, and we mm-hmm. see Jesus wiping away tears, and uh, we see the it's gospel. I mean, no it's all wonderful. We know how it ends. Yeah, so we do. Kind of gives away the uh, climax, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, it because is. Because we're in the middle of the mess, you know. Yeah, right. In the, in the conflict. Yes. It's good to know that how it ends, definitely. No surprises. Okay, well, that I'm glad you brought that that point. That was one thing that was in my mind too. I've I also heard that quote. I'm glad you found that. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be interesting to see what people th- think about that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Well, I think I think now let's talk in terms of long gospel. Okay. Because that's 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 how we're gonna figure out how to preach this. Mm-hmm. Um. Ultimately. So, I I think um. After doing some answering of the question, what's the deal with this, this, this in our text? Um, uh, I'll, I'll be asking the question, what's the deal with fearing God? Why is that brought up? Hmm. Especially when um, when this angel, so I'll read it again just so we're set up. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth to every nation and tribe and language and people. And so he's this eternal gospel is going to be proclaimed here. Mm -hmm. But notice what the angel says. Yeah. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and Mm. give him glory. Now you've really opened up a can. Yeah, Yeah. right. That's, that is difficult. Oh yeah. I think many debates about what does this mean to fear God? Right. Shaking, like shaking in your shoes. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Or is it respect? Some people say love, like fear equals love. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Well, look, if you look at the context here, I'm sure you're going to go there. Fear God. Why? Um, because the hour of his judgment has come. Okay. That's now, that fear. doesn't sound like just total he- healthy respect. That sounds right. like. Actually, be afraid. <laughs> judgment yeah. is, is, yeah. is going to be frightening. Yes. I don't care who even you for, are. Even for believers, I think. I, um, I really to do. To some degree, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just like when the angel angels appear to people, the first thing they say is, fear not. Yes, right. Well, we're, we're not talking angels here. I mean, there is one angel here. But yeah. when God, when we mm-hmm. see God, yeah. Ha, ha, yeah, boy, get down on your hands and knees and pray. Yeah. I mean, you, that heart will be pumping. Yeah. 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 So... I think that's the challenge. What's the deal with this eternal gospel starting out with fearing God? That's the question, I think, to Well, to I, pose. I think you got to attach it to what it's saying here. Give him glory because, because of the judgment. hour yeah. of his judgment has yeah. come. Hmm. So then what would be the issue here? That people aren't fearing God? Is that where you're going? No, I I don't think so. I think that that's okay. just that sounds very law. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I mean you gotta you gotta take it to their home, right? Yeah, get, yeah. Get in their <laughs> house. Right. Get in their house. Yeah, um, I I think. Yeah, that's okay. Let's. This is. I, I won't pretend to have a good answer. Yeah, on this. this is this is what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. Just work this out. I, I I was kind of thinking about it. Um, and notice we're wrestling with the text itself. Yes, and that's that's good. That's yeah. what we need to do. Right. So judgment has to do with um, belief and unbelief, ultimately. Yes. So yes. Not, not so much, I mean, yes, yes, sin, especially. And because um, it, we're, even though we're, we believe in, in Jesus, we still sin. And, and mm-hmm. that's what ultimately condemns a person is their sin. Yes. Um, but, sin is what makes judgment scary. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and even for the Christian who is forgiven, yes. there is still this deep deep uh thing in your your mind, your heart thinking, oh, am I really forgiven? Right. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's always there. It yeah. always kind of creeps in there. And some days on yeah. bad days, it, you really feel terrible. Yes. And uh I think I've seen it a lot too when people are in a hospital mm-hmm. or at the end of their life, yeah. suddenly they realize, "Oh dear." Yeah. Maybe my life wasn't as good as I thought. Yeah. And yeah. so the que- sometimes I think the question people will ask in those situations, I, I can't come to, just from what I've heard, mm-hmm. um, 
is is one of two things like either did i do enough yep um which um isn't the right question we'll, we'll talk about that and and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll explain that but um the other one is is god actually going to forgive me i wonder yeah. if i wonder if people think that yeah oh yeah yeah so the hour of judgment could bring fear yeah and but then people would say well if you're really a believer you shouldn't have any fear right and boy <laughs> yeah i don't know about that one <laughs> well then you eliminated most people in the yeah, world myself I, included <laughs> yeah because i think there is there should be a little healthy fear there yeah. and whether you well, call it respect how often or does what? the bible command it to like fear god yeah. like, even for believers yeah so so the hour of judgment so i'm still trying for you to let's figure out a way we can bring this home yeah you're si i'm sitting in a pew and i hear this yeah what is it that you're convicting me of i think i think we can talk about any any number of sin sins in this one um okay because um and, and i i welcome some input on what we could yeah. talk about yeah um, but i think ultimately the point is going to be sin is what should make you afraid you said this sin is mm -hmm. what should make you afraid of judgment because um, we know that sin condemns you yes um th that's that's what that's what condemns a person is their is their sin mm -hmm. yeah so do you have any ideas for like what how, how we can talk about that maybe in, well again in you got to talk about sin and people yeah. it's like why are you talk about sin all the time well uh this is a pretty important thing yeah mm -hmm. and if you think about it the only reason the gospel has any sweetness is yeah because it's it's the uh forgiveness of that sin it's right. the it's the um what would you say the antidote right it's the way judgment can be a good thing yes mm -hmm. so you got the eternal gospel you have judgment Mm -hmm. And, of course, then you've got to bring in Christ. So how do you get, I mean, you could, you could just make sure and bring that out that these days we don't have a healthy fear of judgment because we don't have a healthy mm, understanding, understanding of, of sin. sin. Yeah. I mean, how many people in our church, and, you know, I don't know this, I can't get anybody's heart, but how many people are sitting there thinking, Life's good. I'm in church. I did my duty. Right. I gave my offering. I appreciated the pastors. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. And uh, and they dismiss this. And the, the sweetness of the gospel is robbed then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, hmm. I, I think that might be something to think about. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a that's a good mm -hmm. good start for that. Yeah. So but again, it's it's well, you talk about sin again, you know. Well, that's what it's all about. It's really what it's about. Yeah. And the uh, sal uh, salvation is the, the cure for that sin, mm -hmm. the gospel. And that's what was missing in Luther's day. I mean, you want to talk about fear. This is, uh, how about attaching this? So think about this. Oh, what yeah. kind of fears were around during Reformation? Uh, like how long you were going to be in purgatory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got an opportunity right here to talk yeah. about the fear factor. Yeah, it might be a good title. Ooh, fear factor. Fear yeah, fact it's an old show. I don't even know if it's on anymore, is it? I don't know. I haven't seen it in, in a yeah. long time. Yeah, they did crazy stunts and things like that. Yeah, but anyway, uh, to talk about fear that was going on. I mean, just think, what would what would make somebody buy an indulgence? Yeah, they thought they were going to hell. It's fear. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. What would make somebody uh, go through Rome and pray? I mean, the Luther oh, movie yeah. has. Luther praying up each step, Luther scrubbing floors. What would make yeah. somebody do that? Fear. Fear. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of fear, as I'm thinking about that, is very, very powerful in here. Yeah, I think so. And I don't believe I preached on that. I pre preached this twice. I never really hit that part. Hmm. Good. Good. Maybe, yeah. maybe you'll go there. But uh, it's yeah. definitely hard. I don't know if it. it'll be the title but. No, <laughs> but I think that's a great way to to address the law in this is mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say you know how how much how often do we either fear the wrong thing um, instead of God true um, which right. is we in Luther's day fearing the church um, or or maybe today it's uh, ostrac 
uh, being ostracized. ostracized. Yeah. Okay. Um, for or or for a fear faith or, or fear of the pastor finding out. Yeah. Rather than God already knowing. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And that, that's a good Reformation connection, too, because it's more yeah. like the relationship between the church and the people versus yeah. relationship. And this is good that you're talking talking about this because you, you you need to bring the aspects of the Reformation in it. Yes. You're not mm-hmm. just talking about this text, and that's right. always a challenge when you do a holiday right. uh, or a commemoration mm-hmm. or anything like that. You, yeah. You're trying to bring that in and try to make it applicable to that time, mm-hmm. and Reformation really did have lots of fear. And people did fear judgment. Luther himself uh, was all about that. I mean, that's what it said right here. I mean, in this this book, he had one goal, peace with God. Peace with God? What was the issue? Because he was afraid. Yeah. He he mm-hmm. just saw God as this, ho- ho- this horrible judge sitting there in the chair ready to strike him down. Mm-hmm. Boy, yeah, it's so sad. Yeah. And you know what? So many people don't have that peace. Right. They're like Luther. They're still searching for it. Right. In all the wrong places. Mm-hmm. But we have the eternal gospel, that's don't right. we? That's right. And that's what that's what this is this is all leading to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I and I think there's a really natural way that this text brings that out. Okay. Um first of all, yeah, the the eternal nature of this gospel. Mm-hmm. That it's that it is for all people in every nation, tribe, language. Mm-hmm. Um and and wow, how cool is that? That this isn't limited to just a small group of people um, that God decided were worthy. Um, no one is, and <laughs> and He decided, anyways, to um, to bring forgiveness. Um, to, I, to not get ahead of ourselves. Go ahead. Can you explain eternal? Yes. So eternal not only is um, uh, like something that starts and never ends. It's something that always has been and always will be. Ah, uh, nicely done. Yeah. So the gospel always was, is, and always will be. And what's the only way that's possible? Through the perfect sacrifice of the Son of God okay. on the cross. I would, I would, that's part of it, mm-hmm. but I think our answer is right there in our text. And worship him who created made heaven and earth and the sea, sea because we know Jesus was not created. Right. He always was. Yes. And Jesus yes. is the gospel. Yes. So right now you have an attachment to this. Yeah. That, well, that's what I was going to go with, believe it or not. Oh, all right. So I, Good. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that's the really natural thing. Um, mm-hmm. To say, first of all, I, I think we need to say that who identify whose judgment this is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually... Jesus, who's going to be our judge on the, on the last day. Okay. Um, and and I I go into that s- somewhat confidently because I I think the gospels attest to that. Um, I think I've heard like God the Father is the judge, but also I, I'm pretty sure like Jesus identifies that, like he's he's the judge. Um, okay. Um. So so to put him there, and then to say to worship him who made heaven and earth, sea and the springs of water. Um, refers back to creation. Mm-hmm. And um, I think John 1 identifies Jesus Christ as the creator um, mm-hmm. of, of the One world. of other places, but that's definitely yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. In the beginning was the, the word, word, and, and the, the word, word was God. With God and, and the with word God. was yeah. God. Yeah. yeah, it's all there, and it continues on, and yeah. it's very clear when he's talking about Jesus. There. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And... Um, I had a, I I had this pastor explain it this way like um, God God the Father spoke um, but Jesus was the hands that made made the mm-hmm. the things okay. <laughs> in the word yeah he was the word making everything happen um, and and so to to not just identify um, the one who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water as God the Father but specifically Jesus is is a connection to Jesus. And I, I think that's great because yeah, you're the, and I didn't think of this until you said it, but that Jesus is eternal and this gospel is eternal is a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Um, he always was, is, and always will be. Yeah. Um, and also, um, creation brings up uh, a unique thing that, that we can't see now. Um, we can only see looking back, um, the goodness of God. So God, God in creation made heaven and earth 
the sea and the springs of water good. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we ruin that by sin, Mm -hmm. (laughs) of course. Um, but you see the nature of God in creation, um, very, in a very strong way that he is good. Um, and you see remnants of that today as you, you know, look at beautiful things in nature, Mm -hmm. but it's fall and it's so beautiful right now. Um, the, the trees are changing colors and, and all that. But, um, but it's the same God who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water that sent his son that did die on the cross. Um, he was the one to pay for our sins by doing that. Mm-hmm. Do you have any any thoughts or like issues with that being the connection that I'm kind of going with to the gospel? Well, or? they're all wonderful connections. The, the whole key is how do you make that make sense? Right. And that's that's always a challenge. Yeah. I mean, you can go lots of different directions but Mm -hmm. you want to have a nice simple idea that people can take home with them and that will always they'll remember it beyond that day Mm -hmm. hopefully yeah um so trying to bring that out and focus on the reformation as well that's that's your big challenge yeah and there's a lot here i'm just trying to figure out that thread (laughs) right you know because you you have a lot of ways you can go about this actually yeah. I know when I preach this, I keyed on the eternal gospel part yes. about which which logically makes sense. It goes into the Reformation. Yes. If I were to preach this today, I, I'm, as I'm talking here, I'm kind of seeing that fear thing uh, hmm. creeping in there and how the gospel is the thing that vanquishes fear. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So perfect love, what? Casts out fear. Yeah, yeah. where's that perfect love? In Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's the gospel again. Yes. Yeah. So you know that's yeah. I'm th- that's I'm talking. You know, it's, of course you get to preach this. Oh boy. But okay. <laughs> that'll be great. I, I no. Yeah. Wait. No. Yeah. So uh, th- that will be. You know, I see that as a possible thread. And what I, what I keep meaning by that thread is that the thing that that runs throughout the sermon. That when you get done, you know the sermon was about this topic, rather than random thoughts scattered all over and when you leave you're just like what was that about right you know something that's gonna it's, it's kind of the theme that that kind of brings out and you've got a couple of ways you can go and i already mentioned a couple of them mm-hmm. again where, where will the holy spirit lead you that's the question right yeah and bring it home that's 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 always the, the ultimate then to bring it home to connect this to, to see the reformation as that happened over 500 years ago mm-hmm. as something that is in contention today yeah it's not over right it certainly had a hu- it was a huge moment in our history yeah and uh, because of it we're different we're a different church today because of it no doubt yeah yeah but i really feel that the the gospel is being lost today mm. it really is it's being lost yeah it's it's always under attack, and that's the yeah. That's and it, it's easily done. Like okay, if you talk about Jesus and what he did, mm-hmm. and then say so, yeah, better, you've just canceled the gospel. Right? Yeah. 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 So I yeah. I think that's one. There's a lot of um, a lot of attachments to the gospel today, and right. that's what's robbing people of the gospel. Yeah. And that's why there's fear. Yeah. When I have a Joel Witness or Mormon or especially Joel Witnesses come, you know, they seem to be living in fear because they have to do these things. Mm. And even a Mormon, you know, they have to do their mission. They, yeah. It's a lot of doing. Mm. And so you really need to throw that back at them. Uh, can you really do enough? Yeah. What is the limit? Just two years of mission work? That's it? And you're done? You sure? You sure? <laughs> Isn't it three? Shouldn't you or do a four? little extra to get ahead of those other guys? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So if you're going to, I mean, that could be another aspect of the law. Yeah. Um, and we hear that a lot from our pulpit in Zion. I know that, that we can't do enough. Doesn't mean we don't do it. I mean, all yeah. of us should do a mission trip. <laughs> we can, but, yeah, right. but not of us. Yeah. All of us are called to do that. But right. uh, our mission is right in our neighborhood. Yeah. But again, it's not, it's not our way to salvation. Yeah. Right. So there's there's always that line. Yeah. Salvation's been done. We got it. We're free. Yeah. Now God gives us the work to do. Mm-hmm. So that, that order is important. So that's one way the gospel can get veiled. I think yeah. back in the Luther's day that was happening. 
Um, you know, I was thinking too, you, you mentioned uh, the context of this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, if you, if you look at Revelation, and uh, you, you can see that the gospel is under attack. That's, yeah. another, that's another aspect of it here that can be mm. brought out. Um, in chapter 12, uh, it says, But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come to you, come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. That's a frightening test. Yes. There. It, so that's some context there. Right. So this dragon, which is talked about in Revelation 12, mm -hmm. is down on this earth, and he's he's know his time's short. So what is his task? To mess things up. To get rid of the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we have. That's why we needed reformation. I mean, he was already busy at work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty frightening to know that he's he's out there causing big problems. He's he's on the prowl looking for uh, people who will stray from the gospel. Just kind of veil it and hide it and mm -hmm. cover it up. Yeah. Um, so this is a spiritual attack, and th and that's where this verse really feels good, because it shows that he loses. Yes. He loses. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because the gospel is still going on. In fact, it's eternal. Mm-hmm. And uh, the hour of judgment has come. Yeah, he's that's why he's so upset because he knows his time is short. Why? Because judgment day is coming. Yeah, yeah. And he can't do anything after that. No, he is done. Yep, he's bound, thrown yeah. in hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I see some fulfillment in that. Mm. Yeah, he's out there prowling around. He's I a see. dragon, yeah. but now we have it declared here that not only does the gospel prevail. But judgment yeah. is going to happen. Interesting. Yeah. So there's kind of a neat tie in there hmm. for sure. Yeah. And so we, we see a lot of that going on in, 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 in Revelation. We see this battle that's going on. Uh, any other verses here uh, that I see? Um, well, there, I don't want to give away uh, All Saints Day, but that's going to uh, ultimately tie to that. That's, that's kind of the end uh, all saints oh. focus on heaven. Yeah. And, and well, didn't you mention in that sermon, didn't you mention like the few verses right before six and seven in chapter 14? I'm actually quoted uh, Revelation seven here. Oh, you he's did. He's going to yeah. wipe, wipe away tears. Uh, certainly. Yeah. I'm trying to think here. I thought there was a part in your sermon where you said like, um, you mentioned the lamb who was slain. Okay, well, I don't I remember that. Maybe even Revelation 5. Oh, yeah, there yeah. it is. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. That's Revelation chapter 5. Yeah. So uh, that, again, is the ultimate appeasal of the, of the wrath. That's why yeah. judgment mm -hmm. is no longer a fearsome thing for us because we know the Lamb has been killed and Jesus has taken our punishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of good verses you can pull in this right um especially when you have two verses sometimes you do need to pull in right um a few verses but and it yeah if you if you leave it at this is the one who made heaven and earth and the sea um that's that's good it doesn't explicitly say that jesus died on the cross so it's talking about jesus um, and you can make the case for that, but to, to be able to say, this is the same guy who is the lamb, who is slain. This is the mm -hmm. same guy who lived on the earth 33 yeah. years and then took up a cross and died on it and then rose again. Right, right. What's, what's really cool about these three verses, though, is these are th three verses that actually belong together very well. Uh, a lot of times you have... The, per, the the lectionary has three three, three readings different three readings, readings. Yeah. okay three yeah. readings yeah these three readings mm -hmm. actually are designed for this one time Ref, Re, uh, reformation yeah. and this is another opportunity where you could touch on that like sure. like romans uh, do you have that handy that verse uh, uh, romans chapter three i had pulled it up on my phone earlier but i don't think i have service down here so okay yeah, but that, yeah, that that would yeah. be good to look up, and because um, I think right there you get a little definition of the gospel. Yes, in yeah. Revelation chapter three, mm -hmm. and if I, I'm not mistaken, I'm, I wasn't the uh, 
the Matthew 11 I th- is that you'll be free indeed. I think uh, I think that's that passage, but hmm. I could be wrong on that. But, um, I should have looked it up before. But yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we failed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll I'll just put them on the screen right here. Nice. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, those are good verses to look at and tie it in because you really have – that kind of fills in the blank. But, again, you, you don't want to be preaching on those texts, but they're good to bring out. Yeah. And right. they all connect. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of it because it, it doesn't always happen. All yeah. Saints is another one the next weekend after that. And, oh, by the way, why, why are we celebrating Reformation so early? Any idea on that? Well, you always do um, – the. It, it's back to back. It's always um, Reformation Sunday, and then it's the next October thirty first. Yeah, mm-hmm. and All Saints is November November first. Yeah. So yeah, you got an issue there, okay? And this year, November first, I believe, is Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So that takes precedence. So All mm-hmm. Saints will be that first. So that means, yeah, the weekend before is Reformation. Yeah. In this case, it's earlier. The twenty fourth, I believe, is the Sunday before. So we're observing Reformation, but not actually not celebrated yet. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's sad that this weekend, uh, let's see, 24th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the 31st, most people won't be thinking about All Saints Day or Reformation. They'll be thinking of Halloween, mm-hmm. right? Sure, yeah. Is that another attack on the gospel? I, I think in a way, yeah. It could. Yeah. yeah. Especially if yeah. it leads you away from church. Right. And you skip the whole weekend because you'd rather go trick-or-treating. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that will be a temptation out there. Mm, yeah. Yeah, for the kids especially. Sure. Um, you know, I'm not saying you can't go at can't, can't go trick-or-treating. But, yeah. Uh, but it will affect Saturday maybe. Mm-hmm. And maybe Sunday morning if the kids are all wired and then they crash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it seems like uh, if if you actually think about it, our viewers can think about all the different holidays that we have, the special days, uh, how they're all ruined mm-hmm. by something secular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you, a good point. You got Reformation and you got Halloween, you got Christmas and you got yeah. Santa Claus and you got Easter and you got Easter Bunny. I mean, yeah. this just seems like the devil has a uh, has some kind of uh, alternative to the gospel. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's what he's trying to do. Yeah. He's trying to cover that gospel again. And he doesn't really care so much what it is. Uh, he doesn't. His goal isn't to have you worship him. It's just to get you take your eyes off of Jesus. Take your eyes off of Jesus. Yeah. And see, all those things are not bad in itself. But when they take your eyes off Jesus, right. now you got a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you got a problem. Yeah. So that's the main thing to think about as we get close to Halloween. Just make sure you keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, that's key. And on the gospel, mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, let's see, what else? What else do you have in there? I think that's that's all I got. And I'm looking at it. I think we're we're about at time anyway. So, okay, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd be willing to wrap us up in prayer unless you have anything else. Well, do, are you feeling better about this, where you're headed? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the the question I have to ask now is how to... I think I've got a thread through everything, but maybe the gospel hinge on, on the last part. So maybe just figuring out how to tie everything there um, in, mm-hmm. into the the gospel that's clearly here. We've identified where it is um, yeah. um, in, in two separate places, even. Um, just deciding which one to really pick and, and stick with mm-hmm. and um, and how to, how to um, have that... Um, be clearly proclaimed in a way that is memorable yeah, nice and simple yep and something that can be taken home and yeah. thought about later on mm-hmm. yeah no doubt it should be fun i'll be excited to see what you come up with and yeah i'm sure we'll be wrestling some more with this text, yeah but oh for sure yeah. it's a great a great uh thing to be preaching on reformation and yeah. uh it's, it's a great celebration in our church yeah and thanks for the opportunity i mean i know that's there's He's, we've talked about this, and he's like, well, you need to do these things. <laughs> You're like, you need to have practice uh, preaching on these these special days. Um, but I don't like to give them away, <laughs> is what he said. Yeah, it's, it's I, hard I, to. I don't. It, I, yeah. it, it is difficult. Uh, but, but it, you know, and every time you preach, you a part of me is there, too. Yes. Because we're working together on it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. 
that's how you know five pastors even why are you preaching like well i am kind of preaching and it's a, it's a vicar yeah and mm-hmm. uh, so as we work together so that's how i look at it uh um and you're doing a great job and we're we're very happy you're here well thank you yeah for sure i'm really happy to be here all right good yeah. we got that going <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same page on that one yeah. all right awesome <laughs> well let's pray then um and high five and all that stuff and all right be done. All right, dear Lord, thank you so much for um, the time to to get to study your word and to uh, figure out how to to preach it to um, your people. Um, bless myself and Pastor Zeman as we we both prepare for this um, coming weekend um, together, and um, may the this eternal gospel that you've you've set um, from even before uh, time begin, um, and and that will be proclaimed now and forever. Uh, may that gospel be what predominates um, this uh, upcoming sermon, and may it be memorable and um, and uh, get into people's homes. <laughs> In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. High five it out. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs>